Maine's laser-guided penalty lights up Africa's day of World Cup joy and pain at errands. Whoever writes Sadio Maine's scripts has been on form lately. For the second time in eight weeks, the Liverpool forward found himself with the chance to seal victory for Senegal against Egypt in a penalty shootout, although this time, rather than being crowned African champions, it was for a place at the World Cup. There had been an air of inevitability about the whole evening after Boule Dia's effort deflected in off Hamdi Fathi in the fourth minute at the new Diamniadio Olympic Stadium in Dakar, which was packed with a capacity 50,000 crowd hours before kickoff. That early goal cancelled out Egypt's 1-0 advantage from the first leg and Ismail Assar had the chance to ease Senegal's path to qualification long before the drama of the shootout, only for the Watford forward to miss a relatively straightforward opportunity. And what drama? A series of lasers had been directed at visiting players throughout the match, but they seemed to multiply as Mohamed Salah stepped up to take Egypt's first penalty after Kalidou Kalibali had missed the opener for Senegal. Maine's Anfield teammate, who didn't even get the chance to take a penalty in the Afghan final as he was down as the Pharaoh's fifth taker, stepped up and saw his attempt clear the crossbar by several feet to the delight of the home supporters. It was only when Saar dispatched the fifth penalty of the shootout that the deadlock was finally broken, before Mustafa Mohamed's effort was saved by Edouard Mendy to present Maine with the opportunity to seal Senegal's third qualification for the World Cup. The game is over. Everything is over, said Egypt's head coach, Carlos Quiraz afterwards. I have not much to say, but words of gratitude to the players. He was surprisingly calm, but the Egypt Football Association is expected to lodge an official complaint to FIFA over the lasers, insisting they affected the vision of their players, Salah especially, during the shootout. Egypt's defeat was not the only hard luck story for North Africa. At one stage it seemed that four could be on their way to Qatar until a dramatic finale to the tie between Algeria and Cameroon that saw Karl Toko Akambi score in the fourth minute of injury time at the end of extra time to send the indomitable Lions through on away goals. Algeria's heartache was compounded by the fact Ahmed Tauba's late goal, making it 2-1 on aggregate, had looked like being enough for Jamal Belmadi's side. Elsewhere, there was no such fairy tale for Mali who were the only African side in the final round of qualifying who had never previously made it to a World Cup finals. They found Tunisia too much in the end, unable to find the net in a goalless second leg after losing last Friday's first 1-0 in Bamako. The Carthage Eagles have now made it to six World Cups, but are yet to get past the group stages despite being the first African team to win a match at the finals when they defeated Mexico in 1978. Morocco, who in 1986 became the first African team, to reach the knockout stages, sailed past Democratic Republic of Congo 5-2 on aggregate and, along with Senegal, looked best equipped to at least match that achievement in Qatar. Russia 2018 was the first time since the 1982 tournament that no African sides made it out of their group, with Elieu Sisse's side no doubt desperate to emulate the class of 2002 by reaching the quarter-finals again and perhaps going where no African team has ventured before, the last four. Ghana came closest to achieving that feat in 2010, when they were a Luis Suarez handball away from defeating Uruguay in the quarter-finals. The Black Stars are not the same force these days despite their away goals victory over Nigeria. The Ghanaian president, Nana Akufo Addo, summed it up best when he referenced their their dogged display in Abuja in a tweet celebrating their qualification via Thomas Party's away goal, going on to say they have made the entire nation proud after the embarrassment of crashing out in the group stages at the Cup of Nations earlier this year. Ivory Coast's hopes of being in Qatar were dashed last year when they lost 1-0 to Cameroon in Dala, a match Wilfried Zaha missed after asking not to be called up. While the Crystal Palace forward later backtracked on the suggestion he was ready to retire from international football and was subsequently part of the squad that lost on penalties to Egypt in the Afghan last 16 of the African Cup of Nations, he would have been disappointed to be denied the chance to face England at Wembley on Tuesday night after being ruled out with a suspected grade 2 hamstring injury. His two appearances for England in 2012 and 2013 came at a time when less elephants were one of Africa's most formidable sides, with the likes of Yaya Tour and Salomon Kalu helping them to win the 2015 Afghan title under Rivera Ennard. Zaha's decision to switch allegiances a year later coincided with a downturn in performances and results that Pascal Baumel, a former assistant to Renard, has been desperately trying to turn around. The Frenchman admitted before Tuesday's friendly that Palace's Abidjan-born defender Mark Gehi had been in his sights before his England call-up and, on the evidence of their disjointed performance in the 3-0 defeat at Wembley, several more reinforcements will be needed before they can compete at the top level again.